Spacelift is an integrated management platform for infrastructure as code that combines the functions of a highly specialized CI-CD tool with sophisticated state management and auditing features. If you're in charge of managing a non-trivial IT system, you know that it is usually composed of a large number of discrete resources. Infrastructure as code tools like Terraform allow you to manage these declaratively. However, useful as they are, standalone serverless tools like Terraform quickly reveal their limitations. Working as a team on large infrastructure code bases, you immediately realize the need for an external coordination tool. The first choice is usually your general purpose CI CD platform. And while that's often enough for smaller companies or straightforward systems, more sophisticated use cases soon require defining various processes and building lots of bespoke tooling. The main problem is that general purpose systems don't deal well with highly stateful workflows, let alone with workflows where an accidental push conflict spells a catastrophe for the business. Let's dive into the product. What you see here is a GitHub repository, which we will use to define and manage infrastructure for your new startup. And although it hosts no resources yet, the repository is already linked to a Spacelift project. We will now create our first resource. Let's make it a master password for our new database and open a pull request for this change. It looks like we've just received some feedback from Spacelift, and it's not positive. Let's drill down to the job execution and see what happened. Oh, wow. It looks like the password is too short, according to one of the policies we've previously defined. Good catch. Let's fix the problem and see what Spacelift says this time around. Success! Now that our pull request is green, let's merge it and go to the project page in Spacelift. You see that the merge event created what we call a tracked run, or deployment, for the merged change. This change is now awaiting human confirmation. Let's confirm it and watch it deploy. Another success. Now that we've created our first resource, let's go to the Resources tab and see it for ourselves. All we can see here now is one lonely resource, surely soon to be joined by many others. For now, let's just click on it and inspect its details. You can see that it's now possible to go back to the job that created it, and from the job, it's just as easy to find the relevant change in GitHub. Now that we've seen a simple Spacelift workflow in practice, let's take a step back and look at some of its central concepts. Probably the most important of them is the stack. Spacelift stacks connect the source code to managed resources. When using Terraform, each stack maps to a single state file. Note that while we offer a state backend for Terraform, Spacelift will happily work with your existing state as long as it's accessible from the worker. Let's now go through some of the settings that we can specify on the stack. First, let's explain what an administrative stack is. An administrative stack is a stack that can programmatically manage other Spacelift resources. We designed Spacelift API first, so our GraphQL API can also drive everything you can accomplish through the GUI. On top of that API, we have Terraform and Pulumi resource providers, which in turn allow Spacelift to manage itself declaratively. Next is the worker pool. Like many modern CI-CD platforms, Spacelift can work in a decentralized mode. By default, we maintain a shared pool of workers available to all users. It's convenient, but it also gives us indirect access to your infrastructure. The alternative is to host Spacelift workers yourself and have them subscribe to the control plane for job events. The important thing with that setup is that it's your worker that makes the final decision on whether to accept or reject a job. So even if our system was compromised, you are still safe. Next, let's briefly look at the project root. We know that many of our customers love monorepos, so we support pointing a project to a specific folder within the repository. The project root setting can later be combined with push policies, allowing you to explicitly ignore changes that don't affect individual stacks, which in turn drastically reduces the noise on your pull requests. 
The last thing on this screen we're going to focus on is the runner image. Like most modern platforms, Spacelift executes its jobs in Docker containers. If you need a custom runtime environment or some non-standard tooling, you can create a custom Docker image and point your worker to it. Let's now move on to policies, the other central concept of Spacelift. Policies decouple decision-making from decision enforcement. Whenever it makes sense, we allow you to decide how to react to various internal and external events, and then we enforce those decisions. As enthusiastic open source contributors, we have chosen a project called Open Policy Agent as our policy engine, along with its rule language called Rego. But this is not a Rego tutorial. We're only here to show you some policies. In fact, we've already seen one, the one that flagged our dangerously short password. That was a plan policy, executed with the set of proposed resource changes as input. Plan policies allow you to automatically review changes for adherence to corporate rules and best practices, and they can either directly reject violations or merely flag them for human review. There are more types of policies in Spacelift, and in this video, we'll talk about a few of them. If you need to define advanced rule-based access controls, you can use login and access policies. They receive identity data from an external provider augmented by request metadata and allow you to express very sophisticated access rules. For example, if a user is logging in from an Office VPN during their regular working hours and your identity provider claims they're a member of a DevOps group, let them in as an administrator, unless they're also a member of a contractor's group, in which case they get regular access to the account and can manage only stacks explicitly labeled as contractor safe. Push policies let you arbitrarily customize your Git flow so you can use service repos, mono repos, branch-oriented workflows, or tag-oriented ones. We support any approach. Push policies receive input from the Git push and tag events, along with Spacelift project metadata. You can then define each project's reaction to the event, start deploying changes, test them, or ignore them entirely. Combined with the stack's project root setting, this policy allows you to make effective use of even the largest monorepos. Last but not least, the trigger policy. This one is probably the most difficult to understand and the most powerful too. It lets you create arbitrary workflows and pipeline structures on top of Spacelift stacks. It is triggered when a run finishes execution on a stack, and it uses the list of introduced resource changes as part of the input. The other part of the input is the list of all other stacks in the account. This policy's outcome is the list of stacks that need to update in response to this event. The trigger policy shines when stacks are dependent on one another, or when they need to deploy in a strict order, such as in the case of complex multi-stage, multi-regional rollouts. We know policies are both powerful and difficult. To make working with them more manageable, we've created a built-in mechanism for capturing policy evaluations. You can add a sampling rule to your policy body to capture selected evaluation events. For each of the collected samples, you'll be able to see and play around with the full policy input document, the policy body at the time of the evaluation, and its result. You can then keep adjusting the policy body until it does exactly what you want it to do. Before we conclude this presentation, let's focus briefly on two other features of Spacelift, contexts and module registry. Spacelift contexts are effectively collections of related configuration elements. They can be attached directly to projects to avoid needing to manage each project's environment separately. What's also worth mentioning when discussing configuration is that Spacelift allows you to mount files directly into your workspace in addition to traditional environment variables. You can use this feature to access data like the cube config file and inject TFRs or even Terraform source files into the environment. Last but not least, Spacelift provides a private module registry for Terraform users. It's not just a glorified package manager. Spacelift provides a complete CI-CD solution for modules. 
It allows you to define test cases that each module release must pass before it's available to your organization. Each test case will create and destroy all the resources it defines, thus ensuring that the release is stable. What is more, modules can use policies the same way stacks can. That way, you can catch violations and misconfigurations way before they even hit your staging environment. We hope you enjoyed this product video. Feel free to create an account and take Spacelift for a spin. No strings attached.